welcome to the first edition of Wexford GAA TV, a new initiative by Wexford County Board. In this programme we will review our county team's progress to date, while also previewing the big game on Saturday against Dublin in the park. Last week Wexford had a fantastic 10 point victory over Kilkenny in Nolan Park. We caught up with the under 21 manager JJ Doyle. Yeah, you, were, you mentioned the conditions, JJ. Uh, the first 10, 15 minutes, the conditions were dreadful. We missed a lot of chances. Were you worried at half time about that? Not at all. Like, I mean, we knew we had the potential if we got the ball to our full forward line. But, you know, I suppose you, you always are like, you, we didn't put him to bed and we didn't put him to bed when we when we had the chances in the first half. We had a couple of goal chances. We missed a few points and that. But, listen, we knew if we got off to a good start, we needed we needed to get the first few scores in the second half and to stick with them. And we did. But, you know, there were three points. It was 11 points stayed there, there at one stage. And you're wondering, like, are they going to get a goal? They got in for a, go a goal chance and, and someone saved it for a, for a 65. But then we got, like, we got the goal. The, the, the clinic and the goal really threw off the shackles. I mean, the, the point that Andrew got it, the, Andrew Kenny got there in the second half. I mean, you know, it's as good as you'll see from, from anywhere in any team in, in any competition, and that's your wing back on up and, and putting it over. So, listen, I'm proud of the lads, but we know what we need to do and we know what we want to achieve. That's one game, and you know, hopefully, we have four more to win this year. Well, that's true, and I think what struck me more than anything today, JJ, was the character of some of the players. You know, you go from cornerbacks, Young Foley, right up the field, and I thought one player in particular epitomised that was Reese Clark had a reasonably poor start to the game, but by God, he came good in the second half, and I think that shows character in players. Oh, absolutely! Like he, you know, he, free takers. It's great when they go over, when they don't go over, and and he was taking them in atrocious conditions there to start, and and both of them, even Jack missed one there, and you know, they missed a few. It wasn't easy. That's the character he's having. You have to have belief in him. I mean, we could have, you know, reacted hastily and taken him off, but I know what he's capable of, and I've seen him working so hard with us this year. And, you know, I mean, his work rate is never questioned, and he got a brilliant point there in the second half. I think he got the goal, the second goal, and but these lads don't let their heads drop. I think they have a belief in each other and a belief in themselves. And, you know, a character is about reacting when, when you know, the proverbial hits the fan. It's it's not about popping points over when you're ten points ahead. It's about the guy that's willing to stand up and and to be willing to stand up and take the point he took there in the second half after missing a couple previous to that. That shows you and tells you everything about him. It tells you everything about every lad in our team. Yeah, I think we all knew, even all true. I f we all felt that Wexford were a better team than Kilkenny tonight. You know, I think from from number one to number fifteen, we looked to have all the aces. But I have to say that when Andrew Kenny went up and scored that point, you know, not just because he's a buffer's alley man, JJ. You know, I'd throw that in. Yeah. But when he went up, that the shackles went off, and they gave an exhibition of hurling in the end of it. They did, but and that's what they were, that's what they're capable of. And we've said it all along that you have to you have to earn the right to play. You know, and we earned it in that we worked and worked and worked. And I'm sure every time a Kilkenny guy turned around, there was a Wexford dad or two Wexford dads in their faces. And, and we wore them out, you know, and, and that allowed us to play at the end of the game. You know, whereas maybe last year we expected that to happen in the first half. You don't get it easy at this level. You know, I mean, there's not a huge amount between any team and you have to earn the right to play. And then when you, when you earn that right, then you can do what we did at the end of the game to put to put a bit of a gloss on it. But, you know, we worked damn hard in the first half to, to, to get there. And I was fierce impressed with the amount of breaking ball we got. And it's something we focused on and it's something we worked on. And, and thankfully, the lads listened. You know, maybe at times you get lads at that age and they think they know everything. But they listened to us and they did the simple things well. And listen, at this, at this level, it's about doing the simple things well. And the team that does the simple things well more often will come out on top. And, and, and thankfully, we did tonight. Yeah, and finally, I suppose, or almost finally, JJ, when did you start working with this team this year? I mean, they look so kind of well geared for the game tonight and they looked very, very at home with their own style of play in that. We didn't start this year. We actually started last November. You know, so there's an awful lot of nights and an awful lot in the last few weeks with club matches and things like that has been a little bit patchy but we had to work done early in the year and, and the fact that there's nine lads in with Liam with the seniors, you know, it could be disruptive but like Seth and Liam have worked very well together and he's been very good to us and we haven't put pressure on, on lads to train too much I mean, if the lads are training with the seniors for me that's good enough for me, I don't need them to be running around and killing themselves with us as well you want lads fresh as much as anything and, and thankfully we got that and was, was you know, I suppose, bring, going back to last year, we were Leinster champions. And I think maybe a lot of people might have forgotten that as well, you know, like Limerick last week. Uh, was the Antrim game last year, is that a motivational factor? Or have you spoken about that? Or, you know, is it a motivational factor this year? I think more so 
the fact that you just said like everyone seems to forget that we played three other games last year and we won a Leinster title and, and everyone and we just challenged the lads they want to be defined by that game or do they want to push on and now they don't want to be defined by tonight and, and go out and get bet the next day they want to be listen I'm not going to pull any but we want to be all Ireland champions and that's what we want and, and you have to win game after game to get that and like we didn't in any way shape or form take Antrim for granted last year in any I suppose a way that, that you could say, listen now, listen, we're going to win. We never spoke about an All-Ireland final. We never spoke about beating Antrim. But you're dealing with young lads who had six and a half weeks before an All-Ireland final where everyone in the whole county was telling them that, you know, she you're in an All-Ireland final where we, you know, fixtures up until the week before. I'm not looking for excuses, but you'd fixtures up until the week before because we were being told they were going to leave two weeks free before an All-Ireland final. You had bookmakers putting us as 80 to 1. Young lads who don't have the experience <laughs> like that's going to get in on the lads' heads, and no matter what you say to them, and as you know well, if you don't go into a game and start with the right mentality, you can't switch it on during the game, no matter how good you are. And we didn't, and we made mistakes, and we learned from that. Now we won't dwell on it, but we will learn from that, and I think we have learned from it. And I think, as I was saying, the reaction at the final whistle tonight shows we've learned from it. You know, a couple of years ago. I think it was a quarter final or semi final, bet Kilkenny and Wexford Park, and it was like we'd won a Leinster final. The different reaction there tonight, and I think it's a long time since an under 20 on team have come to Nolan Park and bet Kilkenny, and certainly not beaten them by double scores. So, you know, we need to drive on from here. We've won nothing. You know, no one's gone out celebrating tonight. There's nothing to be celebrated other than Aidan Nolan is 21 today, but he can hold off that celebration till September. There's bigger fish to fry. Well, all I can say, JJ, is that you're you're very quickly establishing yourself as one of the greatest managers in Wexford history. I know you won't like me saying that, but your success rate has been incredible. I'd like to thank you from all the Wexford people that are up here tonight. You're going home a proud manager. The players are going home prou proud Wexford men, but by God, we're going home very proud Wexford people here tonight. And thank you very much for that. Thanks very much. Our senior footballers opened their championship with a win against Longford. Leona Tector caught up with the man at the helm. Great win last night, Aidan. Never easy going up there to play Longford. Um. No, obviously we have played them so often in recent times we didn't expect it would be easy. Uh, the nature of the games between us over the last few years have all been close, so it proved to be that way again last night. Uh, that we got the win was obviously very pleasing, yes. It was um, a kind of a mixed game during it. You were, it seemed to be cruising along and control. Um, I suppose a sign of a great team that once um, Longford came back and got that late goal, we were still able to stand up to him. Yeah, I wouldn't certainly use the word cruising in the sense that while we were in the in, in the lead and uh, we had, I think at one stage, engineered a five-point uh, cushion for ourselves. You know, at this level, you always know that if you drop your guard or if opportunities present to the opponents, that it's a uh, you know that 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 threat is always there, especially Longford. They have a few very uh, dangerous forwards, the likes of Paul Bard and Sean McCormick, etc. And um, you know, while we had a good position, then to give that up and to fall a point behind, uh, you know, the momentum had very much swung with Longford at that stage. And with only I suppose five or their minutes or so remaining, it probably didn't look good. But. I think it was a testament to the character of the team that, you know, they steadied it and uh, ended up uh, knocking over three points to, to win the game. It was, um, you know, I suppose a mixture of the experience of some of the lads who have been there for some years, keeping cool heads, taking a little bit of responsibility, showing initiative and then, you know, some fresh legs came on the park and I think they helped us, helped us out too. Are there many changes to last year's team, um, you know, now that Wexford are, are bringing a lot of new players into the fold? Yes, well, from the team that played up in Longford last year in the qualifiers, uh, six of that starting 15 are no longer in our squad, uh, you know, retired. Players obviously like David and Red and Anthony, uh, Andreas Doyle, we didn't have Lee Chin this year. Um, so there's quite a few changes. Obviously we've brought in a, a number of young players, a lot of new players, and of the 20 players who uh, took part last night, six of them were making their full championship debuts. Uh, I suppose a testament to the to the you know building program that's in place is that of the subs bench, of the 11 guys on the bench, only one of them had ever uh, played championship before, and that was Joy Wadding. You know, so uh, there is. I suppose uh, something of a rebuild in, in progress. Um, we're trying to, you know, bridge that gap between that team that served Wexford so well over the last number of years and looking to uh, bring a team forward for the future. 
Exciting times ahead now, facing into um, a date in Croke Park um, against either Leash or Dublin. Um, how do you think uh, the Leash and Dublin game will go? Well, look, at, I mean, it would be very hard to predict anything other than a Dublin win. And our guys, how do you think they look forward to a day in Croke Park? Uh, but sure, look, Leona, you've been in Croke Park plenty of times yourself and you'll know that uh, every player loves the opportunity to get into Croke Park and to play in Croke Park, nothing like it. And if it happens to be against Dublin, obviously that adds even a greater, uh, I suppose, thrill to it and a sense of adventure and I suppose also a challenge because obviously if we do end up playing Dublin, uh, you're playing the All-Ireland Champions. Last year we narrowly missed out on an opportunity to play the All-Ireland Champions at, at the time, Donegal, uh, when Leash squeezed us out in the qualifiers. Um, so it would be something we'd look forward to, of course. Exciting times ahead? Well, look, we just take one step at a time. It's 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 so difficult, uh, you know, and the margins are so thin and so fine that, um, you know, winning last night obviously gives us that little bit of encouragement and uh, brings a sense of uh, uh, positivity to the to the camp. Had we fallen on the other side of the result, you know, things could be so much different. So, you know, we're realistic. Uh, we know that uh, for a county like ourselves it's always going to be difficult because we're trying to promote both codes, we're trying to keep the hurling going, the football going. That wouldn't be an issue really in many other counties that we compete against, such as the Longfords or the Cavans or so on. You know, there are many players on the hurling squad that we'd love to have uh, available to us. I'm sure there are probably a few on the football squad that would readily make the hurling team if they had uh, opted to go that way. So, you know, for Wexford it's, 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 a, it's that extra challenge there. Uh, in terms of the future and in terms of the times ahead, look, we at least have uh, a day or two now to relax and enjoy the fact that we are in the next round, look forward to that and uh, start planning. We had a fantastic result for Wexford Camogie at the weekend with the regaining of the Leinster Camogie title. Uh, we caught up with some of the girls after the game and here's what they had to say. Yeah, I suppose uh, to win today was a great great uh, result. We played Kilkenny in the league semi-final and we were beaten by a goal and uh, to go out today and win by five points I think was a great result for us two weeks before championship. It's a great team builder. I suppose confidence uh, it'll help with our confidence. As you said we haven't won silverware since 2012 and it's great to get back on that winning road. Um, we were really disappointed with our league a semi-final against Kilkenny and you know Kilkenny would be tipped there's favourites they were in the All-Ireland semi All Ireland final last year they won the league final so it's a good marker and it's a good test for us just to see where we are and we're under no illusion that we are only at the beginning of June and there's a long road to go but um, for team spirit and team uh, confidence I, I, I'm delighted with our win today. Um, overall, I think we're very happy with our defence today. I, we all played as a team, we looked up, we helped each other. We know there's things that we can practice and that's what we'll be doing now in training. We're back training Wednesday night, we've Galway in two weeks. And I think it's great that we can improve on things, but I think today in the second half we were again a gale force wind. We really dug deep and we showed heart and spirit and I think in most matches that's going to win. It's not the skill or what to do to fancy hurling. I think that's what ultimately is going to help you win the championship games and we're delighted with that we showed great heart and great spirit out there today and i think we worked very hard in for the whole 60 minutes and we're very happy with ourselves i suppose we just have to up our momentum and effort in training um, we're getting near championship pace today was a good marker for that against kilkenny you know to, to set the, the pace of the game so we really just have to dig deep and push on another bit like we always do in training you know jerry is brilliant he has us like working up to peak for championships so hopefully we'll we'll all feel it you know looser and fitter come the next two weeks now before our first championship game against Galway and hopefully it'll continue then for the rest of the season. You had a match today look it was a good win for us you know a good confidence booster and I suppose the biggest thing you know anyone that was up at the match today would have seen what you know a strong wind there was and how much of a huge factor it was I suppose we started off playing with the wind and went a goal down, I think, within a couple of minutes. So, you know, that was disappointed. But, you know, we showed character, we fought back. Um, we went in four points up at halftime, probably a little bit disappointed with that. 
we thought we, you know, we could have had maybe more, but we spoke about it and we came out, I suppose, in the second half, facing into that strong wind. And you know, the most pleasing thing I, I think of today is the character that everyone showed. You know, we made a blister and started the second half, got a, you know, a goal and a couple of points unanswered, whereas people might have expected Kilkenny to do that to us. So, you know, overall, we, we sucked up the, the pressure that they were putting us under and, and we used the ball well. Our defence against the wind, you know, so we're, we're happy enough with how we dealt with, with, you know, the game today. We are facing a, a tough six weeks uh, with our first game away to the All-Ireland Champions Galway in two weeks' time, followed by a home game to Cork and then a, a away game to Dublin. So we have a quite tough uh, group ahead of us. So I suppose uh, we need to get back down to brass tacks and get working next week on the things that we need to improve on and get to championship pace for two weeks time. Uh, I think probably the positive thing today is that we might have some headaches as a management team. We have a lot of girls pushing for places. Not everyone maybe was used today but I think uh, we have a lot of girls pushing uh, for places which will make it interesting for us to have a selection picked for two weeks time. During the week we caught up with a couple of players and Liam Dunn in advance of the big game in the park on Saturday evening. I was pleased with the Antrim game, you know, it was sort of, we were in a no-win situation really. Antrim were coming back on the back of a round-robin competition, they had four championship games, so really if we beat them by 12 or 13 points, you know, if we had to beat them by a point, people would be saying that the round-robin, you know, was a great thing, or if Antrim had to beat us, whereas, you know, we beat Antrim well and... Kevin Ryan and I suppose Antrim were saying like there was too many games involved so there was a job to be done you know and we did the job and I was very pleased with the performance. This is my third year involved now and you know we're, we've built built a strong panel but a lot of young guys after coming into it and guys have gone out of the panel over the last number of years but it's becoming I suppose a young man's game but you know you need experience as well and, you know we'd like to Kieran Kenny and Richie Kyo and Keith Rossiter and Rory Jacob there along with the younger guys and you know, as I always say, if you're young enough and if you're old enough and good enough and applying yourself on and off the field and hurling well, you'll be on the team. Yeah, the injury is coming on well enough now. It'll been, uh, it was two weeks ago, two and a half weeks when I went over on it there against the, uh, the Martins in Wexford Park. Um, but I've been minding it like a baby living down in Curraclaw Beach. So that's uh, coming on well, just about 100% fitness now, trying to get back in the, back in the frame. It's going to be hard to get me plays back with the likes of Liam Ryan and stuff coming in there, he's done very well and that's what you want, you want healthy competition so um, I'll put my name in the mix anyway and sure so, uh, it's up to the boys then after that so um, I suppose in the coming week or the last couple of weeks the team spirit has been good, we're gelling together um, everything's coming together nicely as I said like there's unreal competition for, for places like which is brings out the best in lads I think and um, it's a nightmare for the likes of Liam and all but uh, Sure, we'll see how a week of Saturday goes and we give ourselves a good chance. So. Well, really, I mean, it's a new year, a new game, you know, probably two new teams to a certain extent. You know, Leinster semi-final down in Wexford Park, you know, there was a great atmosphere and a great crowd turned up last year to the game, you know, it was a drawn game in the end. Jack Guiney had to score the equalising point at the very end of the death. You know, so we had to beat Antrim to get this opportunity to play Dublin, you know, in a Leinster semi-final and... You know, they're the teams that we want to be judging ourselves against and Dublin are Leinster champions, you know, and they're deservingly went Leinster champions to beat to beat ourselves. You know, they beat Kilkenny in the semi final last year and then they went on and beat Galway in the Leinster final. So, you know, they're worthy Leinster champions and anybody thinks that that's any different other than champions are coming to Wexford Park. You know, but but as I said, this is how you judge yourself and, and we'll see where we are. Well I suppose last year's team was um had a lot of experience in it. Um, mixed with a lot of youth. I think this year there's a, a lot of experience still but a little bit more youth and I suppose the, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of groundwork on, gone in over the last number of months. <clears throat> you know, we've, I thought we were unlucky in the, in the league and um, you know, now we, after last week as well, gave us a big boost for, you know, to get ready for Dublin again. I think it's vital that we get a, a huge support up in Wexford Park, you know, it's it's not an easy place for teams to come and we know that and you know that's always down to the fans that are there too you know and I think at the moment uh, the way Wexford are going you know the fans are starting to get a little bit more intrigued about coming to games and a little bit more excited to see that we're making huge strides and you know hopefully now we'll get a good crowd again at the weekend. Well uh, I'm hoping people come out you know and support the team you know for a long time we've been down and you know it's great the under 21s 
you know, went up to Northern Park and beat Kilkenny by 10 points. And, you know, we beat Antrim you know, in the quarter final in the senior by 12 points. And, you know, our minors play Dublin in Parnell Park in a couple of weeks' time. So, you know, June is probably a very important month for, for, for the hurlers of Wexford. But, look, it's, there's a lot of hard work going on with a lot of teams. And, you know, in fairness to JJ Doyle and Larry Coleman, you know, they're, they're, they're doing their utmost to, to keep the flag flying at underage level at the moment. And, you know, it's up to the seniors now to to come out and put in a big performance against the Leinster champions. And if I've one recollection of, of last year's game was the magnificent atmosphere, you know, with I think with seven thousand people that turned up to Wexford Park a year ago. And I would appeal to the Wexford people to support this young team and maybe we'll have fourteen thousand there and hopefully we'll give you all something to shout about. We had a good win against Antrim, five goals plus a good few points. Uh, they played played a very good game in the forward line. I be um, at the same time Antrim scored 21 points. So from that point of view, you would say that our defence has to improve for the next day, especially our half back line and centre field. Having said that, their fitness was very good and they, they finished it very well. Now the next day we play Dublin in Wexford Park, and like Limerick, Dublin are. Uh, Limerick are Munster, we're Munster champions and Dublin are Leinster champions so it's going to be a big step up and Dublin are a very hardened team. But nevertheless we're in with a we're in we're in we have to up our game a few a few notches I think for the next day. So full steam ahead for Wexford Park now on next Saturday. Okay lads, uh, big game on Sunday. We're all looking forward to it. Probably one of the biggest games in recent Wexford history. So I suppose the first question, Shane, is Wexford Park. Dublin don't seem to be happy with the home and away arrangement. They don't like travelling. Do you think Wexford Park, first of all, is a good venue? And are provincial venues the best place to bring these games? Yeah, most definitely. I think it's, it's definitely the right direction that where um, the last few games, the championship games that I've been in Wexford Park, I've thoroughly enjoyed them. I think it brings a new bit of atmosphere to it. Um, brings great buzz around Wexford Town. Everyone's talking about it already. Um, and I just think there's no hiding place come come this Saturday evening in Wexford Park. And I just think if there's any bit of drive in Wexford at all, and as I said, if we can keep the game in the metal pot with about 10, 15 minutes to go and we're there, thereabouts, I think the crowd can be an advantage to three to five points for us. And I hope that's going to be the case. So for me, definitely Wexford Park is a big, big advantage um, if Wexford perform this Saturday. Only if they perform, obviously. But it could be the difference in us getting over the line or not. So major, major advantage, I think. What do you think, Mac? I mean, and do you think there'll be a big crowd in Wexford Park? Well, I'd like to think there will be. Um, you know, Extra Park could hold maybe 25,000 people. Um, you will surely get 10 to 15,000 in Extra Park anyway. Um, the weather's going to be fine. It's supposed to be sunny at the weekend. So uh, it will be a, a fair spectacle if we get a big crowd. Um, you know, all supporting Wexford, hopefully. Now, Dublin won't appreciate having to travel, but, like, if you take it for the last good few years, any team playing in the Leicester Championship usually had to travel to Dublin to play a match. Now, the shoe's on the other foot. Dublin are travelling to Wexford. Uh, they're not the happiest about it, but like it is the way forward. You, can, you may as well bring some, you know, bring you know, bring these matches to home and away, and, and you know, give the town a bit of revenue and get you know the Wexford people are in Wexford towns needs a boost. Get them out and get them supporting the team. Yeah, I suppose the one thing with regard to the match itself, and I've been thinking about it for the last while. We've done very, very well against Antrim and done very, very well this year, but we are a very young, a very inexperienced team, Shane, and. I suppose on the flip side, Dublin, Leinster champions, let's not forget that, they're five years in the making. Anthony Daly has put together a very strong team, physically very, very strong. Are we being a little over optimistic to think that we can turn the dubs over on, on Saturday evening? Oh, yeah, you're definitely correct there. That's the biggest worry I have at the moment in that the hype has built up a little bit much. I would rather to go in if there wasn't as many people talking about Wexford. But look, at that means you're making strides. You know, sort of begin to talk about us, and I suppose we can't have it every way. But in experience, I don't know. As I said, you're looking at again, Leash and all, and Conor McDonald's debut. For me, he just fitted in there as if I'm there the whole time. Lean Ryan is no different, you know. And I suppose even our younger lads, Leach and them, they're there for a few years. These lads are, these lads have no problem. They're going to love Wexford Park, you know. These lads have won a Leinster to under 21 final last year. Okay, Antrim took us down in that, but you've got to remember as well, last two weeks ago, Leach nearly back away. We put, we put. Antrim to the sword and they nearly beat us in the league and Antrim beat Leash the week before so I just think 
the the youth is going to be a help for us. As I said, the only problem where I would feel the inexperience is if Dublin steamroll us after 10, 15 minutes. That's the only fear I'd have with lack of experience. But otherwise, I think it's an advantage for us, to be honest. Yeah, I suppose, Rory, this physicality that Dublin bring, and I mean it in the best possible sense. I mean, they're a fair team, but they are big, strong men. Does that worry you, or is there any other element of the Dublin team that, that really worries you here? Or maybe you just feel Wexford are just going to be too good for them, hopefully. Yeah. No, D- Dublin are a very, very physical team, and they showed that last year in the Leinster final. Um, phys- physically very strong, very strong in the air. Um, they have excellent forwards, they have an excellent centre back, so you know they do hold hold all the aces. In fairness, um, now Liam has gone out of his way to work on you know the Wexford team, bringing that physicality to the Wexford team this year. Like Wexford have probably 11 men over 12 foot or, or 11 men over six foot on the team this year which is you know it's, it's a big improvement and I think the way forward is in hurling is big strong men if you take the Kilkenny team last weekend they are physically very very strong and you talk about Dublin preparing this team for five years Dublin have been preparing this team for a lot longer than five years you know there's not one of this Dublin panel that haven't come through the, the combined school teams in Dublin every single one of the men on the panel have come through the combined school school team so you know, it does take years of, of preparation and they are bearing the fruits of that of that hard work now. But Wexford are catching up, Wexford are not far behind. They are physically very strong, but I think Wexford, for the first time in a long time, will be able to match a team physically this weekend and I think they will match them early. Um, however, like what Shane said, my only fear would be that if Dublin get a start on Wexford, if they do, um, the inexperienced then might count but the longer Wexford are in this game the better chance they have of winning it and you know I think the fact that it's in Wexford Park you know the first 10 minutes will be helter skelter stuff and Wexford will really put it up to Dublin Yeah I think everybody will agree really that the start is going to be so important because not only will the start bring Wexford kind of nicely into the game but it'll bring the crowd into the game and we've seen before that the Wexford crowd can be a huge bonus and I hope that proves to be the case next week as well uh, Shane what impresses you most with the Dublin team or where, where do you think our problems will lie with this Dublin team taking into account maybe our own uh, weaknesses hopefully we don't have too many well when you look at Dublin everybody goes on about their size and it is relevant but they are able to hurl and you're also forgetting they've, they've won Leinster minors and um, been playing in Ireland they've won 21s you know Rush is as fine a hurler you're going to see Colin Keeney since he's left the football like he's an excellent athlete he's brought great professionalism to him he'll win any ball anyway he'll strike the ball on the run you know so the various various forwards and obviously you have to give it their, their, their fitness levels but I just think their hurling is not bad as well but I think where I'd be worried from Wexford point of view in relation to that is obviously I think we have forwards to take their backs I really really do looking at them again Leash and the way that obviously Liam seems to be in there doing a bit with the forwards the way they're moving they're moving off the ball like Rory is a handful like everyone's forgetting he's there 10 years now or whatever he's there and he's an excellent corner forward you know Conor Mack is really really good and Liam Ogue is really making creating spaces and Podge Doran has done well so I think we'll be okay in the forwards I'm a little bit worried for midfield in that half back line in that if we're able to dominate that puck out or also use of the ball it just was a little bit disappointing in the leash and how we were delivering the ball a bit from the half back line and I feel that we weren't standing on our enough ball middle of the field if we can counteract that or a couple of little changes in relation to that I believe it'll really bring us a long way in towards us getting over the line against Dublin to be honest Yeah I think the one thing that struck me the last day and I've written about it since is that we do need to deliver the ball a little bit more quickly than we have been doing, Rory. You know, some of our backs were getting caught in possession. I know they're looking for the best option, but uh, you know, that's something that Dublin will exploit if we don't let it happen a little bit more quickly than we have. From your point of view, Rory, Dublin are very, very strong. Where are Wexford's strengths for the weekend? Yeah, well, as I said, Wexford, we have a physically uh, big team now. We have, as I say, a good few lads over six foot tall. Um, we are strong in the air. Um, but where do our strengths lie? Our strengths lie in, in the youth that we brought into the panel. We have uh, very young men who brought in who are more than capable. Um, you know, Liam Ryan being one in the backs, Conor Mack being one in the forwards. They'll have no fear. Um, they've, they've had no fear of playing Kilkenny in the or playing Dublin or Kilkenny in the past. They've beaten the two of them. Um, but our main strength will be, hopefully, uh, the use of our ball in the forwards. Uh, if we can get a, a good fast ball in, well then we have the forwards that can score. Um, they proved that against Antrim. They've proven it against Leash. So that is our big strength. Um, it'll all, as Sharon said, it'll all depend on the dominance of our half back line. Will they, you know, will they first of all stop win Dublin winning primary possession? If they do, and the ball breaks, will they be on to it? And will they get a good, decent ball into the forwards? Um, that'll be the key. 
I, I just I just hope that you know if we don't win the ball in the half back line that there is someone there to pick it up and deliver a good fast ball as you've said into the into the forwards. If we do, there's no doubt. You know, I mean, if Rory Jake was on any other team in the country, he'd have about five All Stars in my opinion at this stage. Um, I don't th I don't think it matters what type of ball Conor Mack is going to get. He'll win it in the air. He'll win it on the ground. So the fast ball is the most important thing. Well, I suppose <coughs> Wexford, Dublin, Leinster semi-final, big crowd, Sky. Rachel Wise, I think it's going to be a great weekend.